no, not another Hitler. Amid the rubble of World War II, the victorious trio, Stalin, Churchill, and Roosevelt, gathered at the 1945 Yalta Conference. Their mission? To ensure that a new German leader with Hitler's malevolence would never rise again. Little did they know that their decisions would shape the fate of millions of German prisoners, caught in a web of politics, brutality, and broken promises. Join me as we delve into the untold chapter of history. The war involved 11 million German soldiers, distributed among 20 countries. 8 million were imprisoned by the Allies in the West, with America having the largest share of them. In general, the conditions of the prisoners in America and Britain were better than in other countries, despite the involvement of the two countries in some incidents during interrogations. This was because Germany did not attack America and did not occupy Britain, for example. In America, the prisoners were forced to work without pay in agriculture and factories alongside African Americans, who were also subjected to harsh conditions at the time. However, the German prisoners received fairly good treatment. In Britain, about 2.5 million prisoners were held in tents and prisons, worked in hard jobs, and received a wage of 2 shillings a day. Less than 2,000 of them died there. In France, however, the prisoners faced severe conditions due to the French hatred for Germany for its occupation of Paris. The prisoners were subjected to insults, torture, and even stoning. They received minimal food, and 2,200 prisoners died every day. The Netherlands and France forced the prisoners to clear minefields, killing more than 2,000 of them every month. After the war, the Red Cross estimated the number of prisoners who died of hunger at 200,000 in France alone. All of this was in violation of the Geneva Convention, which the Allies had signed, requiring the release of prisoners immediately after the end of the war. Not only this, but the Allies circumvented the treaty that the Soviets had not signed in the first place and granted the Soviet Union 5 million prisoners within a program proposed by the Soviet ambassador to the British Empire, Ivan Maisky, extending for 10 years. These prisoners were forced to work hard to rebuild the Soviet Union, in addition to the 3 million already captured by the Soviets. Thus, the Allies turned the Geneva Convention into ink on paper, claiming that the Charter did not apply to German soldiers because there was no state or government representing them. However, the program for prisoners in the Soviet Union did not last the full 10 years, as feeding and housing them became an economic burden. They were eventually returned to Germany, sick and exhausted. Meanwhile, those who were not captured were brought to trial and imprisoned for varying periods. 